In this video, I want to dive into accounts, kind of the details there and the different screens um, and the different functions that you can perform within Service Monster Mobile 3. I'm going to add one. So let's just tap uh, the plus button and we'll go in and add a brand new account. I'm adding way too many Joe Kowalskis. We'll make him uh, Joseph. So we can tell them apart. Um, primary site here, I can tap on the edit button, which will give me the ability to add the address lines, okay? Or I can tap on this plus, or this uh, magnifying glass, and do a search, 4204 Meridian. And you can see it pulled it up for me um, because it's, we're using the Google address verification. And now here it is plugged in for me, which is super nice. Um, I could have edited it and just added the zip <clears throat> and it would find the information for me. But obviously the Google is going to be more consistent. You're going to get your latitude and longitude, which is going to be important for proximity detection in the desktop version. I click on next. And again, I've got this pane here that I can select an account. It's trying to help prevent you from creating duplicates. Um, and that's really what we're trying to do here. So we'll just go ahead and say create as new account. Um, it gives me another screen that I can then focus on some more detailed information. So we'll cover this. Of course, I've got my title, uh, depending on how your job's set up, whether or not this is a commercial or a residential account in your company name. We'll make this commercial and we'll add in a service monster. Definitely active, no alerts. Um, whether or not we want to copy the lead source to new work orders, um, that's off by default. It will copy the first one, but not subsequent. Um, I can set my lead source. So coming in here, I can select a campaign and I will search for one. So we've got our postcard general marketing campaign there. Um, the address, which we already took care of. Some basic contact info, right? And you can set mobile home or work phone numbers. Um, and of course, the email address, which you're always going to want to keep. A good way to get the email address, by the way, is asking the client for their email address so you can send them a copy of the invoice. That's kind of a no-brainer. Otherwise, the, they, they'll feel spammy about it. Come in here, tap in a phone number. Um, and then add a memo. I do have more details too, if you want to get a little bit more creative with your um, accounting side. Um, you've got your terms and tax rate. You also have your account type and subtype here as well. All right, so this is, this is the step that will actually create the new account. So I tap save, and then here we go. We're at our main account screen. All right, so this is where things can get a little confusing if you don't know what you're doing. So I've got a card at the top. This is my account card, and you'll see that located throughout the application. It's got the phone number, next job, last job, and the basic email address. You also have your memo field for the account, your primary address, or your what we call the site card, which is your uh, site name. This time it's primary address, and then very much like uh, Facebook or Google. Um, and then you can tap your driving directions to open up um, your Google map. Now, it will open Google on iOS as well, which is nice. We made that update a few weeks ago instead of using the um, Apple apps. Here you can actually add a job or an order directly from this screen, which is super easy. And then in my hot sheet, I can add a job, add a task, add a note. I can add a new site if they're a commercial account if I'd like. I can add an order or I can tap that call button and it will take my primary phone number and uh, go ahead and ring them. So pretty cool. Now, as you do jobs, that will they will show up here. Um, and so you can scroll down and see that list of jobs. Now, obviously you can't edit the account here. So if you need to make any edits, you'll need to go to the account card, look for the right Chevron in the right hand side here, tap on that guy, and that will take you to an account detail screen. So this is very much like the screen that we used to fill out the remaining account information um, and the more detail section. So pretty easy, but you do have to dive in in order to figure that out. You can't go to the hot sheet and edit from here, although that might be a pretty good idea. Um, and then uh, you, know, you can see your details if I wanted to add a job or an order.
Let's go to an existing account and see what that one looks like. So if I go to my accounts list here, um, you'll see that Joseph Kowalski is at the top, which is nice because it's the last one we entered. So that recent history thing is kind of cool. Hank Aaron is, uh, you'll see there's a lot of them, but he's a pretty big guy. You've got a lot of demo in here. The alert is set. That's why it's showing up in yellow. I've got the uh, memo field, cash only client. So that drew my attention to that memo field, right? Having the alert set. Here's the order history that they have, all the invoices and work orders that this account has had. And you can see we've, again, abused this account. Um, and then their payment status, whether or not it's been paid, what the balance due um, is, and so forth. Scroll through here. If I tap on any one of these, of course, I'll be taken right to the order itself. It's not what we want to do here now, though. And then here's my jobs. So then that's just a list of jobs for this account. Um, and you can dive into those as well. So pretty extensive history for that account. And again, if I drive into the account detail, I've got all that information there at my fingertips. The hot sheet itself, right? You can still do all the things that we talked about. So that's cool. And uh, that's it, guys. That's kind of the gambit of the account.